Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Brent Blackwelder. I'm president of Friends of the Earth, which is a national and international environmental organization founded in 1969. Uh, welcome to this session uh, for a briefing by distinguished individuals concerning a national carbon tax. We're going to be uh, featuring Congressman Larson, who represents the first district of Connecticut, a native of Hartford. He's been resoundingly reelected to your sixth term and introduced a carbon tax measure in August of uh, 2007. And uh, he has also just been uh, elected as chair of the House Democratic Caucus. And he can be with us only for a short time because he has to chair that caucus. Uh, congratulations on such an important position and being uh, so high up in the leadership. It's great to have uh, someone who believes in a carbon tax uh, in such an influential position. So uh, without further ado, uh, we welcome Congressman Larson. Thank you, Brent. Thank you very much. And um, what an honor it is for me to be joined by uh, such a distinguished uh, panel. Uh, I want to thank directly uh, Gib uh, Metcalf for all of his work in helping us design uh, this piece of important uh, legislation. And of course, to have the father of this entire movement uh, Dr. Hansen here and my good friend uh, Dr. Shapiro. It's uh, you're fortunate and blessed to have uh, such an outstanding panel to uh, to hear from uh, this morning. Uh, Brent, I want to thank you again and also uh, thank the Environmental and Energy Study Institute, uh, the Carbon Tax Center, uh, the Climate uh, Crisis Coalition, Friends Committee on National Legislation, and the Friends of Earth. Uh, for inviting me to participate uh, here this morning. Uh, I believe uh, Obama had it right. Uh, as I look out in, uh, to this audience and look at the uh, a number of people that have come together around this important issue, uh, the change you've been waiting for is you. Uh, and we need your help. And we especially need your help um, here on Capitol Hill. Uh, we need you to uh, turn it up, so to speak. And by turning it up, I mean not only the vol volume, uh, but the heat in terms of an understanding of the fierce urgency of now and why we must uh, act in a manner in which will provide us uh, with the optimal legislation to have the optimal impact given the shortage of time that we face in addressing this issue. Uh, again, I want to thank Gib Metcalf, uh, because without his uh, work with uh, my great staff, including Amy O'Donnell, who's here, who really is the architect of the bill, we just take all the bows and the credits for it. Uh, when I introduced the carbon tax bill <clears throat> in August of 2007, let's say uh, it wasn't exactly embraced with open arms by uh, people. Uh, and it's not that I would have been the first person to call upon a carbon tax as the best solution to addressing the uh, climate crisis and securing our energy independence. In fact, there are a long line of economists and scientists and many formers, including a number of the people <coughs> are, that are on the panel today and, of course, uh, former um, Vice President and Presidential Candidate and Nobel Prize winner uh, Al Gore. Although I did say that it's a, it's a lot easier to introduce legislation when you're a former. Uh, the reaction to the bill back in 2007 was, in fact, you know, this is a congressman. This is a great idea. You know, we've looked at this, you know, you know from an academic standpoint. We've looked at it from, you know, uh, an environmental standpoint, clearly. This is the best solution, but it's got a problem. I said, well, what's the problem? It's a tax. This bill is a tax. The reaction to my bill uh, was that, hey, good idea, but it's a tax. Uh, tax, as you may know, around Washington is a very dirty word, and uh, people don't want to confront uh, that issue uh, often. And it's been pointed out by several people, and included that one of the things that we have to do with the American people is level with them. Tell them the truth. 
talk about what we're going to do. Talk about the shared sacrifice that's needed in this country. Uh, tell them in plain, straightforward, simple language the issues that we face, how we're going to resolve them, and what we're going to have to do to get there. It's been almost 18 months since I introduced the carbon tax bill, and I believe, however, that the tables have turned. Today, people are more leery of markets and financial instruments than they are of taxes. Quite a turnaround. But um, whether you watch 60 Minutes go into the whole issue of credit default swaps or if you've been peeling away the veneer on the hedge funds and derivative markets, all of a sudden the idea of auctions and credits, it uh, doesn't sound as, as good as it did before. Jim Sensenbrenner on our committee dramatically said, as my dear colleague and friend and a person I deeply admire, Ed Markey, was talking about the cap-and-trade bill, Sensenbrenner said, well, listen, Ed, come on. He said, it's a tax. We're going to call it a tax. He says, now, at least Larson's proposal, he says, it's more straightforward. It's a tax. So Markey said, are you going to support that? No, it's a tax. Uh, it's not that we don't face hurdles. And we don't face uh, issues. But people used to believe that the tax code was this labyrinth of special interests and smoke and mirrors. And don't get me wrong, to some degree it still is. However, compared to the way that people feel about markets these days, the tax code is crystal clear. And most important, it's transparent. The global economic crisis has really changed things. It began, as you all know, with the mortgage crisis that was followed on quickly by an energy crisis, which was into that was built in this component uh, of speculation and the dark market and over-the-counter trades, and everything began to start to unravel. Um, the dark market, unregulated, um, was driving up prices at the pump. Now the market may be uh, not the solution uh, that people have once thought. In August of 2007, we introduced the America's Energy Security Trust Fund because we believe we should tax bad things like pollution and reward good things like work and wages. We believe we should tax as far upstream as we possibly can. And we believe that we should have payroll deduction for those downstream who ultimately, surely, costs will be passed on to. Ironically, and I think emphatically, what we will do is create middle income tax relief while at the same time serving a direct purpose of cleaning up the environment and getting after the problem of emitting harmful gases into our atmosphere that cause climate change. Or as Al Gore recently said, we should tax what we burn, not what we earn. With a payroll tax rebate to offset any energy cost increase, this bill is the way to decrease pollution without hurting the middle class. I'm proud to say that now 12 of my colleagues, including three members of the Democratic leadership and three of my colleagues on the Ways and Means Committee, have joined me in support uh, for the carbon tax uh, payroll uh, tax rebate. Uh, it's gaining momentum every single day. It needs your help. Now, I know in a, in a body of uh, 235 members, 12 may not seem like an awful lot of support. But these are key members of the Ways and Means Committee and key members of leadership. And as important as they are, they're not nearly as important as the work and effort that you can put forward. Because these things, as anyone who's observed Washington, if you'll note, most change doesn't happen inside the Beltway. Most change happens because of people like yourself who have been involved outside, who create the grassroots pressure who work diligently to make sure that your member of Congress, that your community, that your state, your region 
understands how vitally important this legislation is and the need for us to act now. Whether you support a cap and trade or a carbon tax, we all have the same goal. I just think that the carbon tax is a better way of getting there. It's clear, it's transparent, no new bureaucracy, no auctions. There are four principles that any climate change legislation must include, and I'm proud to say that ours does. It must be transparent. Investment banks and traders should not profit from this. The American people should. Any profits investors see is simply taking money out of the hands of the American people. It must be easy to administer. A carbon tax could be implemented tomorrow, and there would be no need to create new agencies or bureaucracies to implement it. Just use the internal revenue code that already exists. The affected entities already pay taxes, so the system is already there in place. It must be revenue neutral. Uh, I, I really believe that without revenue neutrality, uh, that we can't achieve the goals that we richly need in order to make this pass. We have to make sure that every dollar collected must go back to the American people through research and development into alternative energy technology to transition assistance for affected workers. We cannot convince the United Mine Workers and people who work in that industry that this is a good idea unless they see the benefits. But if they know from the outset that they're going to get benefited first by their payroll taxes being lowered universally, second by making sure that their industry is going to get the tools that it needs and help and assistance to transform, and thirdly, that they as workers are going to get direct assistance that they will need to make this transition. We can do this. And I think when you weigh side by each the benefits, if you're voting and you're an United Mine worker, you're going to say, hey, wait a minute. What's going to happen up here with this auction and this cap and trade system? I want the guaranteed deal. I want the deal I'm going to see in the back of my wallet. I want to see what's going to happen to my region, my area, my industry directly. I want to see the funds that I'm going to receive from this. We provide a straightforward way in which that, for that to take uh, place. Every person in the industry I talk to, including George David from my home state of United Technology, says the key to all of this is price certainty. And increasingly, more and more of our industrial leaders and manufacturers are coming forward and indicating that that's what's the critical issue, to make sure that they have certainty of price. Because then you can go from there and look at your budgets and see what you have to do uh, to make sure that you can make the commitments for your specific um, industry. And so that the biggest thing that confronts them is unpredictability. We want to take that out of the formula by making sure that we're as straightforward and clear as we possibly can. Now I'll leave you with one further point. We need to do something now. We cannot wait to tackle this problem. A carbon tax could be implemented and effective right away. We can't wait for tomorrow. On the other hand, listen, I applaud the people who have been involved because I believe they share the same goals as I do and you do with respect to cap and trade. But it takes much longer to implement. With great pride, I've heard people even in my own state who belong to Reggie stand up and Talk about how we can do this. We can have a cap-and-trade system. It can work. And, you know, I'm not doubting that it can work. But that was first started in 2001. They held its first carbon auction this past September. That was seven years. Far less complicated, by the way, than the carbon tax, excuse me, that the cap-and-trade system uh, that's been uh, proffered in several pieces of legislation. We all agree on the goal, uh, but I believe that we have to be, especially with the public, first and foremost, level with them, be as straightforward as Mr. Hansen has been with them, uh, make it simple, make it fair to achieve our goal. We need your help 
to carry this message with the fierce urgency of now. As John Kennedy admonished us so many years ago, let us go forward then and lead the land we love, seeking God's blessing, but that knowing here on earth his work is our own. You're doing God's work. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you for the opportunity to be here.